Getting the trick from the bed. You know, it's tough after a night like last night. <laughs> oh, I'll get started. I have to go about 9.45. Well, thank you for coming and uh, being a part of this intimate little presentation I've been looking forward to share, sharing here at Durango for a long time. It's very special stuff that I just think every songwriter has the potential to provide if given the right opportunity. And so, my name is Ian McCarter, for those of you that don't know me. I'm a songwriter, but I started as a nurse a number of years ago. And uh, I'll tell you a bit of the story of what legacy songwriting is, and the couple of environments that it's really served its purposes in. And uh, I'll kind of title this talk before and after, which has a couple different meanings. Uh, so, you know, in, in general, as an artist, I think we're all looking for something to say, something to, uh, to serve. You know, I think that's the deepest part of what we can do is apply our work to something that helps another. And so, as I was working as a nurse, I, of course, was working with a lot of suffering and a lot of people who didn't really have a voice and they were learning beautiful truths about what life really is. And I ended up going from the medical world into hospice. And hospice is where everything changed. It was where there was very little facade, and very little reason to hide where in the past I'd see a lot of resistance and denial. And so, you know, the artist in me saw these moments as painful, of course, but so beautiful. And, you know, when we suffer, yeah, it's hard to find meaning unless there's a service behind it or a transformation from it. And so I had this idea as I was working, I'm like, you know, why don't we just take these gems and turn them into something that we can share. And music, of course, and song, is something that can be shared endlessly and infinitely. And it's really something unique to technology today. You know, it's at the push of a button, that word can be in the world, everywhere. And you know, I work with little 90-year-olds, 90 90 and you tell them that their song and their story is gonna be shared around the world, and it's magic. It really is profound and something I think I take for granted. You know, it's really a true gift of our times. And so I have a couple examples I'll share with you. There's one side of this work is hospice, and that's the before, in a sense. And then another division of this work is with grief and bereavement, and essentially after the loss. And so I'll share with you guys a little glimpse into what each world kind of looks like and if this is something that resonates with you and something that you'd like to apply to your own craft I'm at your service. I'd love to help because it truly is a simple, wonderful thing. Um, one thing that I was most struck by with working with hospice patients is that, you know, some people suffer one way and some suffer another. And some face the end with fear and some with love. And some that struggle with the fear need a little help. And, you know, those who, who approach it with love can be celebrated in certain ways. And so I'll share the story about this fellow named Jared. And he was quite young, actually, when he was passing. And he had his family surrounding him at the time, and so he lived way out in the middle of Boron, which is where they mine for borax. <laughs> way out in the middle of nowhere, in the desert. And at the time, I was working as an admissions nurse, and so I went in there, I sat with him, and he's just this thin, skin and bones man dying of cancer, and it was just riddled his body. And so, you know, he was in a very uncomfortable place, as you could imagine. But he had this uncanny sense of humor and positivity. You know, I was 
very impressed. You know, I was like, this is very rare to find someone in this state saying goodbye at such a young age. And, you know, just faced with such pain, you know, but absolute pain, both physically and spiritually, emotionally. And I asked him, I'm like, so how do you find that? What are these elements that you can draw from that you can face death like this? And he says, well, you have a choice. You can, you can face this pain <clears throat> with uh, self-pity and negativity and fear, or you can accept it and find the beauty within it and the context of an example for others. He said, my children are here, they're watching, and this is my last gift. Like, they'll remember this for the rest of their life as an opportunity to give love, even faced with such circumstances. And so, I actually shared some songs with him, because <clears throat> he was like, yeah, I just wish that I could share more. I wish I could give more. Someone so concerned with giving, just about to lose it all. Yeah, I was amazed. And so, I wrote this song for him called Shadow of the Pine. And it's a, <clears throat> it's a unique song in the sense I think that it's pretty relatable, especially given the past couple years. A lot of people have lost ones that maybe were a pillar in their life. You know, someone that everybody came to for support and guidance. And when you lose somebody like that, it's a huge void. And so Jared was a relied upon individual. He was a strong man in his community, and in a sense, he he was like the pine, <clears throat> the shade-giving tree that people sought refuge under, and he fell, essentially. You know, this grand tree toppled down and became a shadow of what it once was. And then, <clears throat> as he as he passed, his memory remained. <clears throat> so I saw this analogy behind this element of what's left behind in such a circumstance. You know, it's like that, <clears throat> that love that he wanted to represent was all that was left for his children. And I just saw this symbolism of how he's like firewood. Like the pine has become something to sustain others in the cold. And so I got to present the song at his funeral, actually. And when we were there, there was a big pine tree that we all were under. And it was quite a moment. The song was a surprise for them. Yeah. But it's something that is symbolic. You know, we're songwriters. We create symbols. And they're reminders for people that hear it. You know, there's something that can be achieved, and there is hope, and there is that underlying choice behind everything. And so, I'll sing Shadow of Pine for you guys, the best I can with this morning voice. Yeah. And thank you for coming so early. <laughs> Yes. 
summer's over and the lightning storm come round. It struck our boy when he come to live down. Well, the bigger they are, then I guess the harder they fall. Sitting on top of this truck, we feel so small. But it's all that's left, and you can make me cry. Thinking about the days when we had the seed of the suicide and so that's a pretty unique grief 
and they were able to lean on each other and as they were able to share their stories we made their songs for them and it was special because there's this creative wonder behind music of course as we know that's why we're here this weekend and for those that don't have a musical component it really has a sense of magic and they've heard songs before they were shadow of the pine and several others and so they came prepared and ready to share their stories and and had a, a creative sense of hope that allowed them to navigate through some pretty uncertain shadows you know as they were cracking their hearts open it's unpredictable what comes out at times and especially with this kind of loss there was a lot that came out and so their songs were written follow phoenix was one that you heard the other night that was for one of the ladies and then that brought in more people and we brought in two women that lost their husbands and they were able to rely on each other and their songs were created and now they're these backbones of the group and you know i just sit there and listen and our therapists do what they do best and navigate these moments and I sit there with a the notepad and just take observation to these elements that, you know, they're very, uh, they don't realize them as they say them sometimes, you know, these really powerful moments of insight and a desire for hope, you know, and it's such pain, you know, it's, it feels like you'll be there forever, forever, according to what they've shared. And, but they desire to persevere and to transcend that pain. And so as songwriters, you know, that can be the North Star of these songs. You know, that can be the driving hope behind it and honor the story of the pain. It's something very present and very real for these people and allow them to cherish the sense that it may not always hurt this way. You know, I've heard that grief never disappears especially the loss of something so dear as your beloved or your family, your child. But from what we've seen, that this pain transforms over time. And love, if it really is love, never disappears. It just changes shape. And so there was an anthemic song that came from this group that called The Forge, and it was written for one of our gals, Michelle, who lost her husband, Brian, and he was relatively young as well, it was pretty tragic. And they shared this fairy tale love, and they just, she said it was perfect, you know, they found each other a little later in life after some struggle, and they came together so strongly and so openly that they truly felt as one. And as she shared, she said that tearing away is why she grieves so much, is because, she, so the irony of human life, so you love in proportion, you'll feel that kind of pain when it's, when it's gone. And so as she shared, our wonderful therapist was keen to remind her that with every moment of pain, it's a mirror of that love which she still feels, and it's his presence that he brings to this group and the sharing that wouldn't exist otherwise. Like he transcends through her, and we're all reminded of that potential of love. And so as the song was being written, I thought there was this analogy of how uh, when two metals are, are melted, and essentially they begin as separate entities and through pain or through challenge or through heat of any kind. If there's love, there's not a taking away, there's a melting together. And with that becomes a permanence and a joining of two into how love can really make you one and how that part of them is always a part of you and never disappears. And so when we presented the song to her, you know, it was just a 
great symbol of what a song can be to someone else who just needs to hear something or needs to be reminded of something very important. You know, it's, you know, I just, I, like moments like when she heard her song, The Forge, is something that I, just, I want all songwriters to be able to hear and to feel from somebody that they're able to witness or a moment that they're able to witness. And I think that kind of mutual vulnerability is really important. You know, I think we need to be very open as artists to receive something as it is, kind of the zen of <laughs> songwriting, I guess, is not to impose too much of yourself as you receive something. And so when you do witness pain with the creative eye, I think, you know, it's, it shakes something in you creatively and it can wake something up to where yourself kind of gets out of the way and it lets that element of service come through. And it's a powerful moment, I think, when you're able to let go of yourself and let that work come through you. You know, we've all had those moments of inspiration where there's no block and you just are completely engaged and you're one with the music. And so, I think this work has the potential to, to shape a lot of us and allow us to kind of engage with that element of removing yourself from the picture. You know, I think there's a lot of self in this world and a lot of focus on you, the artist, you who need all these things. And I, I find it really refreshing in that world to be able to let go and to just listen and to create what comes and, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty open fellow when it comes to what lies beyond my understanding and into the mystery and, and through walking with people who've died, you know, those that suffer beyond a loss, there is this magical quality that I try to be very open to. And I was talking with a dear colleague and friend the other day, and I think prayer has a important place with all this and, and no matter what source you believe in I think it's good to reach out and humble yourself to receive something that's the ether that everyone talks about and I think when you're engaged with people directly who trust you and are hurting deeply and are wanting something that will bring them healing you know, a song um, there's an intensity behind it, and it allows a deeper surrender. And when I was writing The Forge, I was kind of struggling through all these notes. Like we had so many sessions, and it was just hours and hours and hours of this heart being poured out. She was completely open, and she was sharing countless memories and things she missed, and just how she longed for him still. And through all that, we found moments of love. Hmm? Right through? Yes. Okay, thank you. And so I took these notes and I was trying to sort through them and write like eight drafts of this song and there was just so much to sort through it. You know, as songwriters were looking for that North Star, you know, that core that everything in the song can point to. And so I let go and I was like, Brian, your wife loves you still, and she suffers now. And we're here to create something that will be connected to her and then to others. And so in the big picture, there's a potential to connect a dot and to cause a ripple. And so if you're there, if you're listening, give me something. And then the forge came just like that, like in a moment. And it was just, you know, one of those wonderful moments I'm sure a lot of you can relate to where you just can't write fast enough. And so the song came and I was able to share it, you know, as part of our presentation with the group. And it's a big surprise and there's the unveiling. And she shared that when she hears the song, she literally feels him holding her and it's like his arms are around her. And so I think there's a lot to 
reaching out when you're when you're looking and you're desiring to to create something. You know, when you reach out to the the grand picture of it all and acknowledge how you're just a small piece in this beautiful, huge puzzle and how every song you write has the potential to reach somebody and to spark something and to lead to another thing and to just reflect on that possibility that's beyond our understanding. You know, it's just mind-boggling to think exponentially what something can bring. I think it does something creatively that is very important. And so I will share the forge and I will begin our conclusion and open up to a couple questions if anybody has anything. Of course, for the morning, I pick songs with high notes. <clears throat> <laughs>
Thank you guys. It's a doozy for 9 a.m. <laughs> yeah, and some of the analogy of before and after, you know, this, the songs and the artist, you know, they have a responsibility. And this wonderful potential to be architects of paradise. That's one of my favorite analogies of the artist is we build the dream and we build the potential. And when you can connect with somebody like this, it's so simple and it's just another person reaching out to another. And I really do encourage you all to explore that because it begins with your family, it begins with your grandmother, your grandfather, or a friend who's lost a friend. And everybody knows someone who's lost someone. And so, thank you guys. I don't know if you have any questions or anything I can, I can take before I get a little emotional. <laughs> Yes. Right. No, I think that's that's a great point because you know who are we to accept something that's so beyond what we've experienced? You know, to approach someone who's who, who's really suffered. You know, I've never lost to the degree of anyone that I've worked with, and I think there's a sense of you have to have gratitude. I think that's really key, and when you can witness someone with gratitude, knowing that they're willing to share through that pain and honoring them in a sense of thank you for sharing this because it's allowing others who feel pain to see a potential that there is, there is healing to be found. And I think as you work with these women, to start simply and you know, yourself and maybe a songwriter or two that shares your heart and shares that gratitude and humility. And pair up with some professionals. I find if you grab a therapist or two, it really, <laughs> it helps because you're dealing with very volatile, volatile humanity. And it's nice to have someone who's trained to guide that kind of volatility. And that allows you to just kind of take the artist's eye and for them to know your intention, I think, is a really beautiful part of it. You know, and it's a new idea, and it's like, well, I'm going to write a song about you. I mean, most people are like, what do you like? What? A song? You're going to write a song about me? Like, how could you write a song about this? And it's up to you to show them. You know, it's, it's something that you can just say, trust me. Just share your heart and know that you're being witnessed and honored. And then you can turn that song around to them and capture a moment of that beauty that you see in them and, and how you do hear their pain. And you're not negating any pain. You're not saying, forget about it, move along. You're saying, thank you for allowing us to be companions to this journey. And remind them that this song will help others to, to find the possibility. And that brings a lot of, a lot of purpose to the people that you're working with. And if you want to talk more about like how to structure it and stuff, I'd, I'd love to share. Yes. Me? Yes. Sorry. You on the back there.
Thank you. I completely agree. I think we're inspired by this mysterious moment, and it could pass if you ignore it. You know, how many times was dun 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 whispered in the ear of a farmer? It's like, oh, nice melody. I'll get back to home until it reached its home. You know, I think there, there's this beautiful element of being able to listen and act upon of that whisper and finding later that it's exactly what you were supposed to do, as you just said. You know, it becomes more than you can expect at the time. And if you create something true that speaks to the depths of your heart in a moment, you know, you'll find more moments like that down the line and you'll meet people that have those moments and these songs can be anchors for people and they can be a sense of refuge or home, as you said. Yes, sir. speak with anybody at any time, so just come on over if you have any other thoughts or questions. Um, but Jim said how, uh, how the women have continued to heal, and not just women, now we have men in the group, it's grown quite a bit in the past few years, and, and <clears throat> three years ago is when we began this group, it was coming up on three years, and there was this hope to help you know, they were broken with pain. But they came to this group in, in particular because it represented a symbol of being able to take something from that to give again and to transform that pain into, into love. And so I think a key point of what Jim was saying is the healings continued because they've been able to continually share and they've been able to take that pain again and again as they continue to feel it, you know, it's, it hasn't disappeared. As I said before, it's it's just taken different form in everyone that they're able to share with. And every time they hear someone say, I see myself in you, I've suffered and I haven't reached out until I met you, you know, that is what heals them. And they know that they can continue to just do good and make people feel like they're absolutely not alone. You know, I think everyone, struggles with that to some degree, and, and everyone has their timing, you know, I think grief is this incredibly complex thing that you need to honor time and keep in the back pocket. You should reach out at some point, <laughs> but, you know, who's to say what the appropriate time is, but the things with the songs is they're constant reminders of the opportunity to reach out, and every time, for example, Follow Phoenix is played for Janine. It's in the other night. Share it with the group. You know, like, you're being heard tonight. Your song's being heard. Your son's being heard. And that heals. She knows the good's being done even when she's not around. You know, it becomes an entity, entity, a part of yourself that goes off and continues to serve with its life. And it's something you let go of as well. It's a surrender. And so, I think that giving is very key, and it's transformed my work as an artist and a songwriter. Like that's the after, you know. There's no going back. I can't, I can't do anything else. Once you've had this connection with what music can really do in this regard, and you, and you have this opportunity to do it again and again and again and again and again every day, there's no other way to live in my book. It's just, it's, it's it far as music goes. And so I thank you guys and I hope that you can find opportunities in your life to exercise this and, and to be a musical creative servant and create these moments for people who really need it. So thank you Durango. It's been an honor.
Ihre ganzen Probleme. Ja, das geht zum Fabian.